Many miles north of Cary, Idaho, there's a perfect little knoll that provides an expansive view of the Flat Top Ranch. Nestled in the foothills of the Pioneer Mountains, the Flat Top Ranch is home to John and Diane Peavy, a dynamic power couple among Idaho ranchers who have made a big impact on the state's political and educational landscape. They founded and participate in the popular Trailing of the Sheep Festival in Ketchum, held every year in October. We came over to pick up wool, we came over to pick up art, and this is just a wonderful thing. And I've never seen the sheep run, so I want to see the sheep. A record crowd showed up this year to watch the sheep cruise through Main Street Ketchum in October, following a colorful parade of Basque and Peruvian dancers. A third generation Idaho rancher, John Peavy raises 1,000 cow-calf pairs and four bands of sheep with his son, Tom. He's also been a lifelong political activist. He served multiple terms in the Idaho legislature, where he launched an initiative to create Idaho's sunshine laws. And he stood up for water rights on the Snake River. But mostly, he likes to ranch. Ranching is, is a wonderful way to spend your life. I mean, you're out here and it's, Spectacular people travel from all over the world to come up here and spend a week at Sun Valley, and I spend my lifetime up here. And uh, it's the, the animals, the interaction of the animals, you know, the dogs and the cows and the sheep, and the, even the horses are, have got personalities, and it's uh, a yep. lot of fun, very, very rewarding. PV had three children in his first marriage, but for the last 30 plus years, the real love of his life has been Diane Josephi PV. They've been married for over 30 years. An East Coast transplant, Diane not only fell in love with the ranching lifestyle, she became a staunch defender of it as a poetic writer and storyteller. Diane contributed weekly radio essays to Boise State Radio for 18 years. One of the things that really encouraged me or inspired me was at that time there was a lot of um, acrimony about grazing on public lands and it was cattle free by 93 oh. and I thought it's definitely time to get this story out. It's time to talk about this in, in real and earnest ways. Diane Peavy penned her radio essays with wonderful detail about ranching and the rural lifestyle. Every spring we move our cattle 50 miles across open desert, ranch hands on horseback with dogs at their heels. We pull a cow camp for our headquarters. The trip can take from three days with the steers to five days with the cows and calves. We are a strange sight, a pilgrimage of sorts, of animals and men moving north for the summer to high country with its green pastures and mild days. John Peavy's grandfather, John W. Thomas, started the Flat Top Ranch in the 1920s. He was also a banker, a U.S. senator, and he ran sheep. He could see that the people that ran sheep paid their loans off easier and quicker than the ones that ran cattle. And so he started buying up little parcels that were old homesteads. The Peavies bought cattle and land from the Laidlaws in 1960, after John finished a tour with the U.S. Marine Corps. Eisenhower was president and nobody was shooting at us. It was a good time to be in the Marine Corps. Prior to the Marines, Peavy got a civil engineering degree from Northwestern University. I can make water run downhill and I can build a straight fence. Peavy's father died in a hunting accident when John was young. So he always knew he would return home to work on the ranch. Well, I always intended to come back. We had a, a wonderful family that ran a ranch with us. Peavy likes running both sheep and cattle. Oh, it, it works uh, fine. The cattle love the uh, grasses. Sheep like the flowers and weeds. Uh, grasses grow on the meadows, uh, riparian areas, and the cattle kind of stay down lower, and, and uh, the sheep climb and end up up on top. So you, you cover your country a lot, a lot better. The Peavy's cattle spend the winter and spring grazing in the high desert in Kamaima 
north of Burley? And does sheep spend the winter grazing in Nevada and California? Well, the big expense in running livestock is the wintering expense. And the customary way to do that is to feed hay. And uh, with the dairying that's coming to Magic Valley, the hay prices are really super elevated. So uh, we've got a sheep operation where we feed no up baled hay, none. PV likes the Kamaima winter range for cattle. We've found that if we do not graze in the spring or summer and leave it for winter, that those cows will get along really, really well out there. There's a lot of lava flows. It's spectacular country, especially in the spring when the grasses are starting to grow. Peavy learned to fly a Cessna many years ago to keep tabs on his livestock when they go missing. But he's used the plane for other pursuits as well, like courting Diane Peavy. He said, why don't you come spend the summer at our ranch? You want to write? This is a great place to write. Yeah. And I went, I really have never heard that one before. That really is a new line. <laughs> so I said, let me think about it. The daughter of Alvin M. Josephi Jr., a noted historian, author, and authority on the Nez Perce tribe, Diane was working in the public policy arena at the time. She understood politics and the West, having worked in Montana, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. Her family also had a second home near Joseph, Oregon. Diane's friends urged her to go live at the Flattop Ranch. She told John she was coming, and her parents would drop her off on their way from Connecticut to Oregon. But PV had a secret plan. So he called the first night. He said, where are you? I said, we are in South Bend, Indiana. We are always in South Bend, Indiana on the first night. The second night will be in Grand Island, Nebraska. He said, are you sure? And I said, absolutely sure. Their itinerary never changes. So we got to Grand Island, Nebraska, and we're sitting there about to order dinner, and I see my parents' head whip around to the end of the table, and I look, and John has flown out to Grand Island to pick me up. So John scored major points, and that was the way I began my summer with him. John and Diane got married in the summer of 1982. It took Diane a few years to find her niche. I kind of wandered around for five years or so, thinking, what is my place? And it was about then that I finally stepped back and gave myself permission not to be cowgirl of the year. I just finally realized I was not going to rope ride and castrate everything in sight. Diane Peavy began writing about ranch life in earnest. And soon afterwards, she approached KBSU Radio in Boise about contributing weekly essays. They said yes. Yet it is not a frightening landscape. Look down at the smallest details slow to reveal themselves. Wildflowers, pink, yellow, blue, some no bigger than a fingertip, hidden behind stalks of purple larkspur and lupin. John Peavy, meanwhile, was engaged in multiple political battles as a state legislator. Peavy was initially appointed to the Idaho legislature in 1969 to serve in the place of his mother, Mary Brooks whom President Nixon named to run the U.S. Mint at the time. Peavy started out as a Republican, but he got crosswise with his party when he challenged a proposal by Idaho Power Company to build a coal-fired plant on the Snake River in the mid-1970s. Big squabble over what to do with the Snake River and whether we needed a thousand megawatt power plant to pump all of it, literally all the pump water out of the, the snake which was going to triple our power rates. Peavy and attorney Matthew Mullaney filed a complaint with the PUC on behalf of 32 ratepayers, asserting that Idaho Power should defend a substantial surface water rate at Swan Falls Dam. The dam was built in 1901, the first on the Snake River. We were arguing that they didn't need to build a thousand megawatt plant. All they had to do was change water policy so that we could keep this water in the river producing the power that we were using now. It's interesting to note that fellow ranchers John Faulkner and Bud Purdy also signed the complaint. The Idaho Supreme Court agreed with Peavy and Mullaney that Idaho Power had a valid water right at Swan Falls Dam and should defend it. Just before I took office, the Supreme Court uh, just rocked the state 
with a decision that said, well, maybe the power company is entitled to their full right at Swan Falls. We had a tremendous fight for two years in the legislature, and I got into a slugging match with the uh, power company and, and John Evans, too, and we were on the same side, and we finally got to a point where we agreed. Uh, quite frankly, we were pretty much at odds with John Peavy's position, <clears throat> but the interesting thing is that <clears throat> when everything, you know, settled down and we got things resolved, I think it was a good thing for the state because it required us to start thinking about water allocation, how we do it, what interests we needed to protect. Anyway, I uh, lost that election, but we won the war. PV ran as a Democrat for state Senate in 1980 and won, just in time to defend the Swan Falls Water Rights Agreement in the Idaho legislature. In the meantime, the Pioneer Power Plant was nixed by the PUC on a 3-0 vote. The Swan Falls Agreement set minimum flows at Swan Falls Dam and called for an examination of Snake River water rights. Jones gives credit to Peavy for thinking ahead. Without water in a semi-arid state, you have nothing. If we hadn't gotten on the course of trying to fix what was looking like an over-appropriation problem, uh, I think it would have been really disastrous down the road. So even though I kind of cussed him a little bit at the time, I think it was a good thing that, uh, that he got us to thinking about it and, and got us on a path where we did something about it. PV also championed the state's first sunshine laws, which require lobbyists to register with the state and disclose financial contributions. He did so through a grassroots ballot initiative that passed with a two-thirds majority. Peavy's political career ended in 1994, when he lost a race for lieutenant governor against Butch Otter. Peavy received 47% of the vote, while Otter got 53%. Meanwhile, back at the Flat Top Ranch, Peavy had a new challenge. Blaine County wanted to build a paved bike path along the old Union Pacific Railroad right-of-way. The right-of-way also has been used for decades as a sheep driveway. The ranchers said, sure, go ahead and build the path. We can share it. So after the bike path was completed and paved and local ranchers trailed the sheep through, the PV's phone rang off the hook. We were just besieged by phone calls and it was all, get your sheep off our bike path. Their droppings are getting caught in my bike wheels and, you know, and in my rollerblades and it's a mess and get them out of here. John Peavy suggested that they invite the public to help herd the sheep along the trail. So John, who is so good about reaching out to other people and sharing what he loves, so he said, I'll buy coffee, I'll tell them the history of sheep ranching, they can walk with the sheep, walk along the bike path, keep the sheep off the bike path, and they'll find out what it's like to be a sheep herder. Twenty people showed up the first year, and more came the next year. So, the Peavies and the Ketchum Sun Valley Chamber of Commerce decided to create a sheep festival in 1997. The festival pays tribute to the fact that Central Idaho area used to be the epicenter of sheep ranching in Idaho and in the United States. Thousands of sheep were shipped to market out of Ketchum by rail car each year. In 1918, Idaho's sheep population reached 6.5 million six times the human population. Now in its 18th year, the festival runs over a four-day period, with sheep shearing demonstrations, sheepdog trials, lamb barbecues, music, storytelling, and of course, the sheep parade. You'll see the border collies who are the herd dogs. Before the festival begins, John Peavy tours the Blaine County Elementary Schools talking about sheep ranching. This is a wonderful area to raise sheep. We have the big deserts down south to, to winter on, and we have the high country to spend the, the summers on. And uh, it's all naturally raised things that the sheep eat. He talks about the importance of perennial plants and grasses. And those roots go much deeper. And history. I think it was the first form of agriculture, and it, it goes back maybe 10,000 years. The kids ask, where do the sheep herders sleep? They stay in a sheep wagon, it's got a bed, a wood stove, 
uh, benches and a table uh, where uh, you can cook and stay warm out of the, uh, the storm. The kids love the presentation. Thank you. And pet John's border collie. When I find myself in times of trouble. The Trailing of the Sheep Festival helps spread the word about sustainable grazing and raising natural lambs in an area that's popular for tourism and recreation. Diane Peavy says learning the history helps people understand. That's again part of the motivation for starting it. They didn't know the history of this place and we wanted them to have a good sense of the history, that it mattered and that it was what attracted them to the place whether they realized it or not. Uh, sheep were here before the skiing. A lot of these folks will see these sheep in the hills and, uh, and they, they feel like they shouldn't be there, but after they understand their, their, what they do and their, uh, the contribution they actually make to the environment because they, they cut down on the fuel for fire, they leave their droppings, uh, you might say, for fertilizer, uh, they invigorate the plants by the pruning effect, and they contribute to the economy. And I think people like them after they understand what it's really all about. Back at the Flat Top Ranch, John Peavy has been transitioning the ranch operations to his son, Tom. The family recently signed conservation easements representing 23,000 acres with the Nature Conservancy, NRCS, and Blaine County to preserve the working ranch in perpetuity and enhance sage grouse habitat. Not a bad place to spend eternity, is it? <laughs> Days like this are just incredible. This is In the fall, I have a lot of hunting friends that come up and they have to remind me every year how lucky I am to live in this work out here. And I tend to forget about that a lot during the summer and the stress of the business. And when they come up, they all, oh, Tom, you're the luckiest guy. <laughs> and uh, it, I just have to get out on these warm fall days and love the cold mornings and the warm afternoons. And it's just, just beautiful. Without question, this is <laughs> right here. This is what I really appreciate. <laughs> I think the other thing that I'm most proud of was the fact that we were able to put this whole place in conservation easements. Yeah, sure. That's huge. That means everything that I love about this place should be here forever, <laughs> except John and me. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, this is an amazing piece of land. It's got an amazing history. And just to think that it'll be here is, is really something to be very proud of, I think. I'm pleased that uh, the valley will look uh, about like it does right now, you know, 100 years from now, 500 years from now. That, that makes you feel good.